In this video, we're going back to ions, and we'll, we'll be discussing their charges, more formally known as oxidation number. Remember that an atom is an electrically neutral particle composed of electrons, neutrons, and protons. So what does this mean? It means that a neutral atom has a charge of zero. But an ion has a charge, right? An ion is an atom that gained or lost electrons, and we know these ions as cations or anions. A cation is a positively charged atom that lost electrons, whereas an anion is a negatively charged atom that has gained electrons. Previously, we talked about a neutral atom and put it, we put a charge to it and changed it into an ion. So for example, calcium atom. We have the symbol Ca. When a calcium atom loses two electrons, it has a charge of plus two, and so when you put the two together to make an ion, it's Ca2+. A chlorine atom is Cl, it gains an electron, minus one, so the symbol for the chlorine ion is Cl1 minus. Now, in today's video, this is what we're going to talk about. You are going to learn how many electrons an atom will gain or lose, and what the charge is for a specific element. Now, the more formal name for charge is oxidation number. And this indicates how many valence electrons the atom will lose or gain. Remember that a valence electron means the outermost electrons, and those are the ones that will be lost or an atom will be gaining those valence electrons. So the metals tend to lose electrons because metals have um, a low number of valence electrons. And, and that's why metals are known as the cations. So if you take a look at the picture here, the lithium atom has one valence electron, but when it becomes an ion, that one electron goes away, and you'll notice that it doesn't have that one valence electron anymore, but now how many does it have? It instead has two total valence electrons. The nonmetals tend to gain electrons and therefore are known as anions. So for nonmetals, because they already have a lot of valence electrons, they want to gain the electrons. So a fluorine atom already has seven valence electrons. So how many does it want to gain? It actually just wants to gain one more. So as an ion, it now has eight total valence electrons. So why, how did I know that a lithium atom will only lose one and a fluorine atom will gain one? Because remember what we said previously when we talked about valence electrons? All atoms want eight electrons. So they will gain or lose the electrons to get to eight. Now, of course, the exception are the, the smaller atoms. So like hydrogen, helium, lithium, beryllium, they want a total of two valence electrons. But other than that, all the other atoms want eight valence electrons. Why? Because of stability. So let's take a look at these examples. Beryllium, magnesium, calcium, fluorine, chlorine, and bromine. Take a look at your periodic table and find where all of these elements are. Did you find them? What group number are they in? How many total valence electrons do they have? Beryllium has two valence electrons. So, will it gain or lose electrons? Well, beryllium is at a metal or a nonmetal. It's a metal. So remember what I said? Will metals gain or lose electrons? Metals tend to lose the electrons. How many electrons will it lose? Well, it's going to lose all of them. So it's going to lose two electrons. So what does that make the oxidation number? Remember, oxidation number means charge. That means that the oxidation number is plus two because plus, meaning lost two, because it lost two electrons. What about magnesium? How many valence electrons does it have? It also has two. Will it gain or lose electrons? It will lose. Why? Because magnesium is a metal. And how many will it lose? It will lose all two. So the oxidation number here is plus two. What about calcium? 
Calcium also has two valence electrons. It will also lose two electrons because it is a metal and it wants to lose all of it. And so again, the oxidation number is plus two. What about fluorine? Fluorine has seven valence electrons because it's in group 17. Will it gain or lose electrons? Fluorine is a nonmetal, right? And nonmetals tend to gain. So fluorine will gain how many electrons? Well, remember what I said? How many total electrons does any atom want? It wants eight. So it already has seven. How many more does it want? It wants one electron. So what's the oxidation number? It's minus one. Minus because it's gaining an electron. What about chlorine? Chlorine also has seven, so it will gain one electron for an oxidation number of minus one. Bromine, same thing. It has seven valence electrons. It gains one electron for an oxidation number of minus one. Now, what's the pattern here? What do you notice? That if it's in the same group it ha and it has the same number of valence electrons, it's going to do the same thing, right? It's going to have the same oxidation number. So let's take a look and label our blank periodic table. All the elements in group one will have an oxidation number of plus one. All the elements in group two, plus two. Let's skip to group 13. Group 13, plus three, and then over to our nonmetals, minus one, minus two, minus three. Now notice with our nonmetals, I highlighted the particular elements that you had to know. But why does this stop here? Because underneath them, those are metalloids, right? And I'm only interested in the nonmetals right now, since it's only our nonmetals that have these particular charges. So now let's talk about our transition metals. I always talk about our transition metals last because, again, they are, um, they are unique. They like to break the rules and things like that. So in group three, we have plus three. And then we'll talk about the transition metals, the oxidation numbers for these transition metals at a later time. But what you have to know today are these uh, charges here where zinc is plus two, cadmium is plus two, and silver is plus one. Now all of our gas, noble gases will have a charge or oxidation number of zero. Why? Because they already have a full octet, right? So take some time to label your periodic tables, whether you're labeling your big master copy periodic table or the notes. Um, make sure you have these down. These are oxidation numbers that you will have to know by heart. And these oxidation numbers we will be using next unit, so please make sure you memorize these now. So let's take a look at some practice problems. Let's write the electron configuration for a neutral oxygen atom. So this is, we didn't do anything to it. Um, let's just write the configuration as it is. So oxygen is number eight. And the electron configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p4. So let's take a look at some practice problems. Let's write the electron configuration for a neutral oxygen atom. 1s2, 2s2, 2p4. Now I want you to write the electron configuration for an oxygen ion. So how is this different from what we did before? Well, this time I'm not telling you the charge, right? I'm not telling you how many atom or how many electrons it's gaining or losing. You need to know that now whenever you see the word ion. So check your periodic table, find where oxygen is, check the charges or the oxidation numbers that you just wrote down on your notes, and you know that oxygen has a charge of minus two, so the ion is O2 minus. So then how does that change the configuration for oxygen ion? Instead of saying 1s2, 2s2, 2p4, that means that it's gaining two electrons and now that becomes 2p6 at the end. What about the configuration for a neutral silver atom? One s two, two s two, two p six, three s two, three p six, four s two, three d ten, four p six, five s two, four d nine. 
So what's going to happen if we're talking about a silver ion? So again, look up silver on your periodic table. What charge do we put down for silver? We said that is 1 plus. So how does that change this configuration here? Remember what we said last time when we talked about electron configurations? Instead of losing it from the 4D, it's going to get lost from the highest main energy level, which is the 5. And so it looks like this, where it's 5s1, 4d9. Last question. An atom has the following electron configuration. How many electrons will this atom lose in order to have a noble gas configuration? Well, what do all noble gases end with? It ends with p6, right? So how many electrons will it want to lose? It's going to want to lose two electrons. Last thing before we end. When atoms have the same number of electrons, or in other words, the same electron configuration, we say that they are isoelectronic. So for example, sodium ion and oxygen ion are isoelectronic with neon. Take a look at all of these configurations. Sodium ion is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. Oxygen ion is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6 and neon is also 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. They have the same number of electrons, they have the same electron configuration, so we say that they are isoelectronic with each other. So try answering this question. Which of these are isoelectronic? Is it set A or is it set B? Pause the video here and play when you're ready. Set A is the correct answer. All of these atoms and ions have the same configuration as helium 1s2 all of them have two electrons